Hong Kong securities regulator is accepting license applications for crypto exchanges. Senator Warren is speaking out about crypto and the fentanyl epidemic. And Dogecoin is back in the headlines again. I'm Jensen Assey, and we've got all the hot takes in this week's episode of Trend Spotting. All right, we took a look at the Google Trends data over the last seven days, and Hong Kong is gaining a lot of search traction online. Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission started accepting applications for crypto trading platform licenses on June 1st. Here's what InvestHK, head of financial services and fintech King Lung, told us on Coindesk TV yesterday about the changes. Today, the, I guess, enactment of the enhanced regulatory regime, the operators that have been operating uh, in Hong Kong, they'll be giving, before June 1st, they'll be giving the transitional period of one year to continue to apply for the enhanced license. So in the meantime, they can continue to operate. However, for firms or exchanges that have not been operating in Hong Kong prior to June 1st, 2023, and from this point onwards, they can no longer operate uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, otherwise, there'll be a criminal offense. So they have to apply for a license. Until they get the license approved, they cannot operate. Lawrence Lewitin joins me. I think you saw him a little bit earlier. Lawrence, we had that conversation with King Long yesterday. We spoke to Justin Sun this morning about Huo BHK launching in Hong Kong. What do you make of this kind of sudden buzz around Web3 and crypto yeah. in Hong Kong? Yeah, it seems that there are a lot of there's a lot more interest, a lot more activity going on uh, with people looking at, at Hong Kong as a potential place for them to trade. And, and that, of course, happens when a regular regulator says, you know what, we think we might have, uh, you know, some clarity. I think that's basically what it comes down to, that as long as there's some amount of clarity, as long as people know what what their lanes are going to be like, they are more willing to invest knowing the risks that they that they may face uh, regulatory risks you know once you take out some of that risk and and again it doesn't mean no regulation it just means that and, and obviously any place that's ultimately run by Beijing uh, is going to have a lot of guardrails there in terms of, uh, or, or not, I wouldn't say guardrails so much as it's going to have a lot of regulation. And so that's why you're seeing that interest. You're, you just, people know what they can and cannot do. That that changes the, the game a little bit there. And, you know, and of course, yeah. It's interesting you bring up Beijing, right? This is a question that's been kind of swirling. What does this news mean for China? Of course, um, there are ways to access Google from China. Do you think that the, these search results are coming out of Hong Kong and China, you know, wondering the same thing we've been wondering what this means for China? Yeah, everybody's going to wonder. I, I think this is, it, 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 again, it, if it ultimately means that China itself won't allow it, but if there's a way to for Chinese citizens to trade in Hong Kong, then okay, then they'll they'll pursue it perhaps. Um, but again, it, as long as they as long as people know what they can and cannot do or have more clarity on what they can and cannot do, they're more willing to take on those kind of other risks, if you will, which is how they're going to invest, et cetera. They, you know, if they have that uncertainty that, oh well, what happens if the government seizes my bags? I you know, that that kind of stuff, um, it makes them reluctant to trade in it. And for a long time, there obviously we know that China's not exactly been the most friendly to crypto. Uh, I, I believe the word ban is uh what people that is the word that, that is used. the word um <laughs> so uh, you know it, it uh <laughs> you know they, nobody wants to end up in a situation where the government doesn't say anything and then all of a sudden bans it uh now if they say well look we're, we're gonna allow you to trade but here you can only trade on certain uh, on certain exchanges here's what would require the exchanges here's the amount you can ex trade here are the kyc requirements then you have more people say, you know what, I, I could take that risk. I, I, I can I could put some money in into this market and do it. And so that's why we're seeing that kind of buzz. It's so interesting. We're seeing these Web3 hubs mm -hmm. popping up. You know, Hong Kong is now building towards being a global Web3 hub. We're seeing Dubai kind of take a position there while the U.S. gets further and further right. and well, further behind. 
That that's in part because the regulator in the United States has basically said almost all crypto other than Bitcoin it, it, are is security. You know, so like people look at this um, and they say, well, gee, I yeah, I might own such and such uh, uh, cryptocurrency. But if it's called a security tomorrow and the exchange that trades it all of a sudden is going to be is going to require a lot of licenses uh, by the SEC. And maybe they'll say, I, I, you know, why would I want to trade that? So that that again, that's the kind of difference there needs. There's no regulatory clarity in the United States Um and it's going to be a while before that happens. You have a, a regulator, the SEC, that is more than happy to, to over-regulate, if you will, crypto. You have another regulator, CFTC, it's, wants its its uh, clause in it as well by calling everything a commodity and therefore easier to trade. And then you have Congress, which hasn't come up with the rules. And once Congress kind of clears it up for people, which is their job, but they're too busy doing other things, um, it... it, it it might change things. Uh, but in the meantime, we're all at the mercy of Gensler and uh, what he deems as a security. And so that makes it harder and harder for, for companies and businesses to operate in the United States if they don't know what will happen uh, if one day Gary wakes up on the wrong side of the bed and says, you know what, this, 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 and this, those are definitely securities. I'm going to go after anyone that, that, that trades it and allows it to trade on their platform. Speaking of the U.S., another hot topic on Google this week was Senator Elizabeth Warren's comments. She cited a recent report detailing the rampant use of cryptocurrency in the Chinese fentanyl trade during a Senate hearing earlier this week, arguing for legislation to help break the pipeline. You know, Lawrence, I predicted that this was going to happen right after ellip- after the elliptic data was released. Elliptic and I believe Chainalysis released data that said, you know, people are using crypto businesses are accepting crypto. These are Chinese businesses for precursors to fentanyl. When I read that report, I said, oh, we're going to hear this from U.S. officials very, very soon. And here we are, Senator uh, yeah. Elizabeth Warren talking about the fentanyl trade as it relates to crypto. What did you make of this? Well, I, you know, part of, look, those of us who have lost friends to fentanyl um, and loved ones, it, this is definitely a, a serious topic. And I, I think that this is becoming more and more of a topic uh, as we see more and more deaths in the United States and people want answers and they want to they want to blame somebody. They, they you know, uh, this stuff is is horrible. And. I don't want to say that Senator Warren is trying to capitalize on it. That would be wrong. But it does make it easier that if if there's a boogeyman that you constantly want to blame uh, that is ultimately involved in some manner, such as some people using crypto for some sort of transactions, uh, you know, trying to say we can crack down on it, we can stop it uh, with the with the flick of a button. Um it provides an easy answer. It's I don't want to say it's demagoguery, but it's demagoguery. I mean, I mean, this is unfortunately to solve the situation with fentanyl. It goes beyond just stopping uh, crypto, which is a, probably a minor player in the transaction aspects of fentanyl uh, and, and money going to these to, to these manufacturers. Uh, we don't know exactly how much. Chain analysis has some numbers. Elizabeth Warren has much higher numbers, but um, it, it's it's something. And of course, yes, it, no one can deny that crypto is used in fentanyl transaction in, in in these wholesale transactions for fentanyl, but. This is not necessarily going to be solvable just yet, just by, you know, and the ability to just flick a button is going to be tough. It's going to be like anything else, like arms transaction, like, uh, you know, other illicit things that are traded on the dark web. You have to ultimately find it and you have to, uh, you know, so it's going to be just beyond that you're only going to get a small slice of those transactions anyway. It, 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 there is still a lot of cash floating around involved in this. And unfortunately, uh, as long as there's cash, cold, hard paper cash involved as well, there will be bodies piling up in morgues because of fentanyl.
Yeah, you know, fentanyl is the number one cause of death for young adults in in the United States, Lawrence. And I, I believe the numbers, and I stand to be corrected here, are for buying the precursors to fentanyl. So this is a legal trade. I don't believe that the data that came out of Chainalysis and Elliptic was for the for the dark web. So it's interesting that um, this narrative has been has been picked up, but it is definitely something that I think. Um, a lot of Americans can relate to and a lot of um, Americans um, be, become emotional about, right? Because we have lots yeah. of family friends who have, who um, have been affected by, by fentanyl. So I can and understand. That, uh, why. Yeah. And uh, that's why she's of course making a stink. You know what? I, I was helps in elections. I'm doing something. Yeah. Well, it's too late for a lot of us. All right. And switching gears now, the number one most read article on Coindesk this week uses a technical analysis indicator called the Bollinger Bandwidth to analyze Dogecoin. The chart patterns suggest a volatility explosion ahead, Lawrence. There is volatility on the horizon for Dogecoin, according to this. Yeah, Bollinger Bands, John Bollinger, God bless him, you know, coming up with this and and everyone using his uh, indicator. Uh, nice guy, by the way. Um, nothing gets people excited like crypto, uh, like crypto people doing memes and technical analysis. I mean, it's got everything. I don't know. I It's none of it <laughs> makes sense, to be honest. I yes, don't know either. <laughs> yeah. People love it though. People love Doge, and I just can't keep up. It's yeah, I, but you know the the excitement of Doge always has been this sort of like it's a play. It's definitely a play currency in in many respects. It's purposely uh, priced so low that you just own a lot. So there's a psychological effect of seeing you know your account full of millions and billions of something, um, and uh, at the same time. You know, what are the fundamentals of Doge? Oh, there's not many. So I guess people kind of turn to technical analysis. And it's, again, it's it's fun. It's cute. All right. So we're at a, right now, low volatility. Um, and sure, could we break out? Uh, you know, Bollinger Bands use uh, the moving averages. And that's, you know, I'm not going to get into it. Because quite honestly, um, yeah, I'm not exactly uh, big on it. But. Uh, the way I would say is you kind of have to look at the broader picture. It, it's not just about Doge. Doge, to be sure, has idiosyncratic uh, movements. But there's the overall crypto market and the overall appetite for risk. And that might be what causes the, the decrease in volatility. So if there is a breakout in volatility, it will have more to do with the market view of risk rather than anything specific to Dogecoin. So have fun with it. And it's, it's awesome to like experiment and do whatever. Don't put your kids' entire college money in it. I think that's great advice, Lawrence. I, I think, you know, put 10, 20 bucks in it, play around with it, share the dog memes, have some fun. I think that's a great story to go into the weekend with. That's a wrap on this week's trend spotting. Time to touch grass now, Lawrence. See you next week. <laughs>